The 277 is one of the most competitive tech tree tanks that you can get your hands on. 490 Alpha, decent standard pen, very very nice heat pen, all while being very decently armoured and more than mobile enough to get around the battlefield and into position. In this video I'm going to go through everything you need to know about this tank, a full tank guide so that you can get started and get to grips with how this tank plays, things that you need to be aware of and obviously what are the best equipment choices and crew skills for the tank. Now before we do anything, we need to get a style on this tank. And of course we are going to be using the lovely fluffy style. Yes, that is what it's actually called. Perfect. Now, this tank is a lot different from other tanks. The problem is this gun is absolutely useless. And I personally want as much gun handling as I possibly can on this tank. So I am going to be using vents from a V-Stab. With a V-Stab directive, you could go and replace the vents for turbo or HP. However, in my case, I prefer using vents. Now for the crew skills, we do have a kind of exceptional crew. We have Daki as the commander. Um, and I believe he came with three skills by default um, and with obviously zero skill brothers in arms. Um, but the one thing you need to watch out for is that on the commander, you do need to train situation awareness with recon. So it is going to take you a lot longer and there's a lot more pressure on the commander than otherwise there would be on other tanks. So the radio operator is your commander in this tank. Although that shouldn't be anything new because the T-10, the IS-3, both have the radio operator as the commander. So you should be moving your crew up as you go up through the tech tree anyway. So this shouldn't be too much of an issue. Obviously you do want to be having brothers and arms on absolutely everyone as well as repairs. And if you can get a zero skill crew, that is going to help you out dramatically. Another thing to mention is that I do like running Deadeye, especially with these types of guns where they are 490 Alpha and they do have pretty good caliber guns because it is going to wreak havoc inside someone's tank once you do pen them. And final words are going to be on intuition. Obviously, this is going to help you out quick switching between shells. Now for the ammunition loadout on this tank, we are going to be going with 12, 20 and 3. Um, you could go for something more like this, if you would like to. It all depends on the player. Um, I quite like the AP rounds on this tank, especially when it's compared to heat. Heat can be a little bit dodgy in some situations. So I do quite like using the AP rounds, um, but that's just me. The thing is, there's no real reason to use the AP rounds over the heat rounds because they go at exactly the same shell speed as well. So it's not even like you're gaining the advantage in that respect um, with the AP compared to the heat. But as I said, I do like the normalization. I do like the fact that it's a little bit easier to perma-track people with AP compared to heat. Also, the HE rounds on this tank do get 65 pen with 640 alpha. Uh, they do go slightly slower, but that's pretty decent for HE. For field mods, this is what they look like. We are going to go for the left hand field mod because we are not using HP. If you are using HP boost, listen carefully. Do not choose the first field mod. I have a full video about that. You can go and look, at, look up on my channel. The next one, we are obviously using the improved aiming because we need to get this gun dispersion down as much as we possibly can. For number five, free view range. Why not? For number seven, we do go for the top forward speed because again, why not? Like it's kind of free. Yes, it is slightly going to make our tank worse, but not by that much. Like the turning speed is not really going to be affected. Like this thing is already very, very good in that respect. And the aim speed doesn't really matter, especially if you're going to be keeping that bloom down as much as we can. And for number eight, we are using the minus dispersion because I hate the gun on this tank. Like I want the dispersion down as much as we possibly can. And I will sacrifice hit points to do it. Just quickly, we're going to be talking about the armor. There's not a lot to go over here. It is a pretty well armored tank. The only problem with this tank is when you side scrape in it. It basically cannot side scrape. And I mean, it cannot side scrape. Because as soon as you do, yes, there are random spots that you will ricochet off. But they will pen you. I guarantee you. They will not hit this random spot where they will ricochet. They will manage to hit the easy shot there. And that is if you're on flat ground. The problem with this tank is that it's so low profile. They are actually going to be more like this. And that is a very easy shot to pen. As you can see... 180 millimeters of pen. Even tier eights can pen you when you try and side scrape. Now you can try and reverse side scrape and you can do this extremely well. Um, however, it's uh, probably not really recommended because you can over angle it and chances are they're not gonna actually go for this bit here. They'll try and shoot this or you know they'll go for this area here and then miss. Um, but 
you can kind of over angle it but for the most part you're going to be wanting to side scrape something like this um and there you go that is what it looks like you are exposing a lot here so i just wouldn't recommend side scraping in this tank to be honest now turret armor though is very very good there is only one thing that you need to watch out for and that is above the gun now there are two random spots here above the gun obviously you being very low profile you are going to have this problem quite a lot there is a little bar at the top here where you will be able to go through you need about 300 pen which in nowadays world of tanks is absolutely nothing um <laughs> can't believe i'm saying that but that is how the game is now and also just above the gun you'll be able to go through it note that this is obviously using heat if you're using ap and you have high pen ap like say a type 5 heavy um, you only need about 260 pen to actually go through this um yeah that's not a lot and obviously you do have a capola however the capola is very very small and not easy to hit anyway Let's go play some games. Okay, so for our first game, we're on El Haluf. Very nice map. I don't mind this at all. Um, now, the one problem with this tank, besides the gun, we'll move on to the gun. Maybe it'll behave in this video, maybe. Um, I did actually try and record this video once before, um, and it the gun did not behave. Not to mention that I constantly got 15-5 games with two artillery, and there is two artillery in this game, but... You know, that's besides the point. I mean, I'm all for showing you my bad games, but when it doesn't even show you how the tank d like actually works in game, there's no point showing that. Um, we are going to be going up here to try and get as much as we can. And we are also going to be going to this spot here to see if we can get a shot on anyone that is crossing. Um, the other bad thing about this tank being gun depression, you don't get a lot at all. Well, we definitely got up here fast enough. Oh, hello. Time to load heat. Although... Heat isn't going to really help me against a crown. When I'm going to be Capola sniping him. There we go. Get one into that IS-7. Very, very good. I'm going to go forward to try and get this shot off. Oh. Okay, that was a bad shot. That's fine. And now we see the absolutely awful, awful gun depression in action. Where we now can't really do much. So what we're going to do is back off, go around to where this IS-7 is. And hopefully we can actually help, us, help our team out. Because we can't do anything in that position anymore. We need to move. There is nothing that we can do to help our team out from that position there. Be loading heat again just so that we can actually maybe pen a little bit better especially like right underneath his gun i went closer to the capola than where i aimed it <laughs> okay i mean if this type 5 peaks again we might be able to get a shot off that didn't go anywhere close and it wasn't perfectly aimed either but Nice. Bit of a risky shot that, but it worked out. Okay, now that he's fired. We did actually hit the Capola there, but <laughs> it was the very top of it, so it's not going to pen. As you can see, the gun. The gun is the worst part about this thing. It's so, so derpy. Even though that it's 0 0.32 accuracy, it just feels like it's 0.4. Maybe we're just going to have to keep trying to get as much as we can out of this game. We are up on HP, however. However, we... Um, we actually hit like a little bit of a ridge line there. Or a little bit of whatever it was in the ground. We 
We were up by about 5k health, and now we're only up by 500 health. I mean, at least we can get as much damage as we can out of this, but we are running low on ammo. I mean, we're up to 3k damage now. Slowly just whittling down their HP. I'm kind of surprised this 62P is still alive. Like, their artillery is doing, like, insane work, and our artillery is... I don't know what they're doing. I kind of need to stop going for these shots at the 60TP. Because the chances of me actually penning him are extremely low. It's low DP. Let's see if we can get a Capola snipe on this crown. I mean, watch me hit this out of everything. Okay. Nice. Well, the crown's dead. That's not good. Of course, that misses. We get extremely lucky there. Okay, here's what we're going to do. They just both... The M60 just fired. We're now going to go across. Oh, why? Really? Load, eight, uh, load AP. See if we can get a shot of this Griller. I know we should probably load HE here, but... That's what I have loaded right now, and I'm going to track him to try and keep him out in the open for my team. Very nice, we get him killed, and now he can progress forwards. RT is going for me, he misses. We just keep going. Loading heat for the M60. Don't really need heat for the M60. Also don't really need heat for this S-Conk, but... <laughs> Maybe I do. Two seconds. Uh, do we get a shot on this FV? Oh, what on earth is this Fosh doing? I mean, we penned him for 663. Okay, let's go see if we can kill the RT. I think going up this way will be a lot better. Nice. Now we need to try and find where the Batcher RT is. I'm guessing he's probably in the same place. Mr. Artillery, where are you? Is he hiding down here? He is. Okay. 4.7. Not too bad. Get a little bit of assistance as well. Um, obviously, we got 400 on the tracking, so it's about 50-50, which wouldn't help us out with marks, but... Uh, I mean, it's already marked, so whatever. Uh, yeah, we come second on damage. Not too bad at all. However, what was bad was the gun. 23 shots, 16 hits, and 9 pens. Like, the gun on this tank... The thing is, on paper, this thing is amazing, like, gun-wise. But when you get into the game, the gun is so infuriating to play with. Like, it's unbelievable. Anyway, we're going to play one more game, and then wrap things up. Okay, well, our final game that we're going to be playing is on Fisherman's Bay. It is, again, with two artillery. I don't know what it is today. Like, why is this just two arty in every single game? Ugh. Anyway, we're going to go into the... I don't even know... I, I used to call these arches, but then they removed the arches, I think. Wait, did they remove the arches? Let's have a look. Are the arches still here? No, they removed them. See? Very, very sad. They're ruining my uh, my positions. That also is very, very sad. An unfortunate bounce. And <laughs> we're trying to side scrape, but as we are well aware, oh, that is uh, not really something that the uh, the two seven seven is strong at. Let's see. Does the IS seven want to get in a side scraping battle with me? Mr. AMX. Okay. Interesting. Don't know quite what his plan was, but sure. But the I-7 is actually side scraping against the FE, which is fine. Um, he's kind of then out, out the way. That was 
very close. He stopped just before he uh, he crossed. I probably don't really need heat for this guy. But I will need it against the IS-7. Unless he shows me his lower plate. Also, there's a Type 5 Heavy there. Interesting. Let's see. I will spot the AMX if he crosses. Um, I should probably give a little bit of lead, just in case. He uh, comes out with a run-up. I do wonder if I can shoot this Type 5. I might be able to, actually. Oh. That is some incredible, just incredible timing. <sighs> Very critical damage, if you were wondering. Extremely critical. And people wonder why we fire heat. Because half the time, the AP round doesn't even pen, even when it's meant to. Let's see. What is the T-57 Heavy doing? I saw him moving around the map. Maybe he's going to go to uh, this position to try and shoot me. Might actually better get a shot on this Type 5. <laughs> what is this guy doing? <laughs> the Type 5 is a little bit lost. Yeah, I can't really reliably hit this AMX-30B. However, we still have all of our health. You know, we still have enough shells. We just need to take our time and we'll be fine. I'm going to go and switch back to AP because I might try and shoot through this. Is there like... Can I shoot through this? I'm not sure. Ugh, that was not a nice shot. T57 does want to play. And I am kind of worried about that. Because if he keeps trying to pen me like that, I can't reliably shoot that. I want to try and get this guy out of the game. Man. go. I7 trying to side scrape against me. Nice. Very, very good. Easy damage. We don't really have to really do anything, actually. Like, we can just sit here for quite a while. Let's see if we can now kill this 277, get him out of the game. Wasn't quite the angle I was expecting. But everyone is actually... Get one more into that Type 5. Everyone's kind of gone this side now, which is interesting. However, that does mean... That does mean that Arty can now hit us reliably. So, yeah, that's a problem. Let's now move out the way of this and go back to trying to shoot this because this IS-7 is coming back. You know what? From his angle, I'm not sure if well, I go if I go where the T-57 is. I'm not sure if the RT can actually hit me. I will also just repair this so I get my tracks back to full health and also I get the. Uh, my view range back. The RT can shoot me still. He's trying it. Okay. I mean, we get an extra shot in, but... Ah. It's kind of painful to play. I think it's time to try and run and get into cover somewhere. Because I don't see how we're going to hold the city. What I want to try and do is go back to where the 60 TP is, and then maybe... Actually, I could even try and go all the way back. I'm not sure. If we get the EBR killed, then we should win that flank. But the EBR does need to die, so we're going to load AP. And we'll try and get into position to 
shoot whatever is spotted. Starting off with this AMX 30B. There's the EBR. This guy needs to die. Like he is number one player that needs to die. Come on, team. Give him a good bit of death. That was awful. I mean, we critically hit him, though, as you can see. Nice. One into Leo. I'm glad I came here and not, not stayed in the city because we would not be getting this damage right now. And we would probably be dead, actually, if we kept peeking. So we have solid cover here to save us from artillery. Or at least majority of it from artillery. And we can now just keep, you know, peeking backwards and forwards to try and help out our team. As well as also, we can just reverse a little bit and we should be able to even shoot the mid if they over push this. Let's just turn around so we actually have our, uh, our frontal armor facing the enemy and not the side. <laughs> EBR, are you going to make my day and try and push this? bad man. No connection. IS-4 is trying to push. Nice. Get him killed. Unfortunately though, we have nobody to spot this. Which is now going to be extremely bad. we get 4.7 again out of it but I mean what are you going to do our team just lost the other side of the map and you just lose the game after that so yes 4.7 again I mean not bad damage like, we're definitely consistent with damage but uh, our team not so good so yes at the end of those two games we do get 4.7k average damage um, with a little bit of assistance so uh, just over 5k combined not too bad but yeah the 277 it's it's a weird tank because the gun just really lets it down. It's still probably the best tank to go for as like a starting tech tree because the whole line is really, really nice. And the tank is fine. But without a good crew and without decent equipment, it's kind of horrible to play with. Like you 100% need a stab on this tank. It is horrible to play without a stab. Um... And that is why I also use vents as well, just to boost everything else. But it's... The gun is the biggest issue. The rest of the tank is fine. Like, you can kind of survive with minus 5.5 degrees of gun depression. But just because of how fast it is. And with heavy tanks, you don't necessarily need that extra gun depression. At least most of the time. There are maps, obviously, where you need it. On, even like on El Haloof where you saw we just made our way around it and dealt with it with our situation it's pl more than playable the tank is fine it's a good tank but the gun sucks to think of it this way whatever you would normally get in your tank minus one or two shots and that is what you would get with this gun because on with, with all of these games we probably could have got about 5k or maybe 5.5 out of it but because of the gun, and it just randomly will miss, even if you're fully aimed, that is what happens with this tank. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video.